Hello, everybody. You guys ready for this? All right, we're going to start at the beginning with our man, Amadeo Modigliani, who was born July 12th, 1884, as a good Jewish boy to a good Jewish family in Livorno, Italy. Now, Modigliani was born with an innate talent for art, but he had plenty of time to nurture that because he had a childhood filled with uh, ill health. And at the turn of the century, he decided he wanted to take that skill in art to Paris, where everyone who had a skill in art was going to live that Parisian, mo bohemian lifestyle. And here is where we meet Amadeo Modigliani. Artist, drunkard, addict. Um, he was a dandy and incorrigible flirt. He was constantly creating. He was also constantly broke. And so routinely he would trade his art for booze or drugs or hand it out like a gypsy fortune teller on the streets of Montmartre. And we know from his contemporaries that he had a way about him his curly hair and his deep penetrating gaze and his practice of quoting poetry from memory, as well as his impeccable outfits. Even Pablo Picasso must have had a crush on him because he was quoted as saying, there is only one man in Paris who knows how to dress, and that is Modigliani. <laughs> so... Uh, I'm just going to add to this a little bit more by saying that he had this pickup line he could use if he was painting you for a portrait. He would say, if I know your soul, I will paint your eyes, which was not an idle threat. <laughs> In fact, this is one of Modigliani's signature styles. He's known for these blank eyeless portraits that leave the admirer wondering what's behind them. And there's another thing Modigliani is very well known for, and that is his babelicious nudes. We're looking at one called New Conch that was painted in 1917, which was the year that it was displayed in his first and only personal art showing, which was shut down by the Parisian police for being too outrageous because his nudes looked like they were having a good time. <laughs> and they also had pubic hair, which was scandalous of the era. Uh, don't worry though, too much about Modigliani, he was doing just fine and his reputation survived in art circles. This is the year that he's become an internationally well-renowned artist and his less scandalous paintings and sculptures were being displayed alongside the artists of the era. 1917 is also the year that he meets his um, last and most loyal lover. Her name is Jeanne Hubertine and she is an art student of 19 years old. He is a 32-year-old dashing man about town. It is a scandal in her social circle because her family thinks that she's taking up with what they think of as a failed artist who's what's more Jewish. But the two of them live the next three years very happily together. They have one child, they get pregnant with a second, and the 1920 hits and everything goes to shit. That's the year that Modigliani dies of tuberculosis and Jean follows one day later of suicide, eight months pregnant with their second child. So that is the end of Modigliani, but not the end of Modigliani's art. In fact, it is this painting, New Conch, that in 19, excuse me, 2015 scandalizes the art world yet again for selling in auction for $170 million. Just to put this enormous number in context, uh, the most well-paid living artist today is one Taylor Swift. And it took her almost the entire year of 2015 to make that much money. <laughs> Modigliani did it in one fell swoop. And that is a small portion of fine artists who've been able to make one, more than $100 million in one piece of art. Uh, here you're seeing the top five. So Modig, our man, comes in number two right after Pablo Picasso and before internationally well-known paintings like The Scream. So... At this point in time, 
everybody wants to have a grandpa who swooped up a Modigliani for spare change. Like, if you swapped him for beer money back in the 19-teens, you are doing quite well. However, unless you got your piece of art from the man himself, there is not an insignificant chance that what you have is a forgery. Amadeo Modigliani is probably one of the most forged artists of all time, and experts do not splash this number around, but there's probably more than a thousand fakes of his attribution out in art institutes and private collections around the world. There's some problems with Modigliani's catalog. I'm gonna give you a few of them. One of them is that dude went around trading art for hooch, which might make provenance kind of rough. Two, fakes began in the 1920s, barely after Modig has passed from this world, and so there are lots of decades where the art um, empire is not so lucrative and where suspicions aren't so hot for his pieces of forged art to sneak into collections around the world. What's more, there is a terrible, terrible record of what it is that he really made. There are currently five official catalogs, none of them agree, all of them have problems, and several of these experts who have written these catalogs have formally been brought up on legal charges for officially okaying forged pieces of art. Also, thank you, science is expensive, y'all. And based on a lot of things that we don't know about Modigliani, what pigments did he use? How many threads were in his standard canvas? He just wasn't as regular as you would need for this style of authentication. And also, a lot of these um, analyses rely on x-rays and infrared tests, and those cost cash. Most importantly, a lot of the people who own these Modiglianis do not want to know if they are forged and worth a fraction of what they paid for them, especially if they need to pay for science to find out that information. So now we get to the local part of the story because the art museums here in San Francisco, officially titled the Fine Arts Museums of San Francisco, heretofore known as FAMSIF, which is basically the fancy title for the Legion of Honor and the De Young collections combined. They own a Modigliani that was donated to FAMSIF in the early 80s by a local family. And when they received this piece of art, they treated it as authentic and valued it at $500,000 and then bought a ton of insurance. And then I discovered it <laughs> a little bit later in 2015 and fell in love with this piece of art. In fact, you're seeing my Halloween costume for 2015, and also my look for tonight. <laughs> so this is a great piece of work, um, which is officially titled A Portrait of pierre Edouard Baranowski, officially painted by Modigliani in 1918. And FAMSIF, in the 1990s, decides that this portrait is a little bit official and or a little bit suspicious and officially downgrades its insurance and its value to $15,000 and says nothing about it. But I wanted to know more, so I've gotten the scoop from you, about why this particular Modigliani came under suspicion. And what I've got is a couple of different things. For one, the provenance is shady. As with many Modiglianis, this one in particular, we don't know of its story before 1953 when the doning, donor family came across it. But we do know that seven other buyers gave it a hard pass because they were worried that it was a fake. What's more, it's painted on a hardboard, and there are officially two portraits of Edward, um, this, this um, person, Pierre Edouard Baranowski, that are in the first Modigliani catalog. Both of them, though, are recorded as being painted on canvas. And there is this other portrait that is officially cataloged. It's in a collection in England. Its uh, provenance is perfect. And so fans have decided to fly their version over across the pond to check it out side by side. And theirs does not look so good in comparison. 
In fact, based on all this research, they decided that the one that had been donated to Fansifs was a poor forgery, and they officially took it off the wall, downgraded it in its insurance, and said, too bad. But that is not the end of the story, because at this point, the family who donated this piece of art said, no, 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 no. You are besmirching our generosity, and we insist that you look into this a little further. But once something has been declared a fake, the process of declaring it actually not a fake is pretty crazy pants. And with a story this messy, it's tough to know how the hell you can prove that it's authentic. Basically, you send it to the lab. And you have someone like our heroine, Elise F. Min Clifford, put on the job to officially, technically investigate this painting, which happened in 2011. So basically, she was tasked with looking for any clue whatsoever that would either confirm these rumors or put them to rest forever. And if this was a movie, we would cue our tension-filled spy music because our detective is on the task and she is not going down without a fight. So basically, she takes it all on. She looks at the provenance and collects more of the story and doesn't quite get all the way to Modigliani, but definitely gets well past 1953. She also finds a ton of other scholars who revealed that the artist showed a great deal of variety in his technique, and um, they probably shouldn't have passed in the first place. She finds a ton of other paintings that he's made on hardboard. She talks to other folks to examine the paint application of this work and say it's actually rather similar to some of the other things that he's done. And she flips the painting over and has an epiphany. Because no one in the history of this controversy that lasted decades turned the painting over underneath to CSI this shit. But Elise F. Men Clifford did and she found fingerprints in the painting on the back of this piece of art, which is hella harder to fake the materials or technique. I think we can all agree. So Modigliani's own fingerprints were there to confirm this really was his painting all along. And hopefully Elise F. Men Clifford is showered with all the praise that she deserves for getting to the bottom of this. Not only that, she also is the, our benefactor tonight for giving us the moral to this story because she couldn't really get over the fact that this painting right here had been given the hard pass so many times and she couldn't let go of this idea that maybe bias was to blame for all of that shade being thrown on our Modigliani painting. And there is a concept that exists in uh, cognitive psychology about this phenomenon called heuristics. It's basically the cognitive shortcuts that we all use all the time in order to quickly and efficiently process all of the vast amount of information that we're facing all the time. And if you're given all this information about forgeries being rampant, and rampant it's hard to ignore that information. And basically, this information is generally essential. It allows us to behave like normal human beings in this busy, busy world we all live in, but it can cause us to make really natural in the moment, but tragic shortcuts in the long term. And in this case, uh, this team had been trying so hard to prove the painting a fake that they didn't look for evidence that it might prove to be authentic. In the end, we got there, and Modigliani's portrait of pierre Edouard Baranowski again holds a place on the wall of the De Young Museum. And now that you know that it's 100% for sure an authentic work, I suggest you go see it for yourself. At this point, I'm going to raise the first toast of the night to art, to art authentication, and the task it holds for all.